Well, hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. And today I'm going to be starting a series of videos, uh, which I'll be doing now and again, about the great pulp heroes of yesteryear. Great pulp heroes like Doc Savage and the Shadow and the Spider and uh, some other great heroes that we don't hear enough about nowadays. Uh, and I was wondering, you know, who should I start with? And then I realized, you know, I should start with the granddaddy of all pulp heroes, Tarzan of the Apes. Tarzan, who first appeared in a pulp magazine, The All Story, in 1912. Now, most of us know of Edgar Rice Burroughs' creation, Tarzan, through his cinematic adaptations. And it must be said that most of those movies, they're pretty bad. Uh, but of course, those of us who read books know that the character that shows up in those films, he isn't the real Tarzan. The real Tarzan was actually kind of a complex character. Uh, the real Tarzan, yes, he was raised by apes in the jungles of Africa. His, his parents were marooned on the coasts of Africa when uh, the ship they were taking passage on uh, was taken over by mutineers. And uh, his parents died there in Africa and he was taken as a baby and raised by apes. Uh, and he was eventually found by Jane and her father and the, the small party that was with him. And uh, Jane and Tarzan eventually fell in love, of course. They got married, have a kid. But most of Tarzan's adventures take place after that event, or those events. And uh, Tarzan, though he was raised by apes in Africa, was actually Lord Greystoke, uh, titled English Lord, Lord Greystoke. Uh, he was uh, an intelligent man who spoke English perfectly uh, with a French accent because he learned French before he learned English. Uh, he has an interesting backstory, Tarzan does. And Tarzan is an interesting character because you know, he's, he's got this savage side to him because he was basically, you know, he fought to survive for 20 years in the jungle. Uh, but he also, you know, wants to have ties with uh, his fellow humans, although he can't really relate to them fully. And he finds their ways strange. And so we have a character here who, you know, he's, he spends parts of the time in the jungle and part of the time uh, as an English lord. And he's not fully at home in either of those places. Uh, he always feels a little out of place uh, all the time, which is, which is interesting. And he's an interesting character. Uh, unfortunately, Edgar Rice Burroughs has suffered the fate that a lot of great classic authors have suffered, authors like H.G. Wells and Jules Verne, and then in that he was a guy who wrote an awful lot of books but we only see a couple of them nowadays. Like H.G. Wells, he wrote a ton of books and we only see maybe 10 that are regularly reprinted. Um, Jules Verne, we, it's even worse. Uh, we maybe in English only get five or six uh, of his books when he wrote over 60 of them. Same is true of Edgar Rice Burroughs. There was a time in the 60s and the 70s where everything he wrote was printed because he was a big deal back then. Not so much now. Uh, now you will only, if you go to a bookstore, you'll be lucky to find one or two. You'll find maybe a Mars book, maybe, and you'll find this book. Uh, Tarzan of the Apes, the first book of Tarzan. This is the Penguin's Classics edition because, yes, Tarzan is a classic. Got a great Frank Frazetta cover here on this Penguin Classic. Uh, so this is the book you'll find, but he was in a lot of books. Uh, but they're hard to find as books. Uh, you can get a few copies here and there. I think uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated, I think that's the company, uh, is, is putting out a line of hardcovers, but those are all print on demands. You know, you can find, uh, you can find these books uh, print on demand. Um, and the first, I think right up until Golden Lion, uh, Tarzan and the Golden Lion, I think you can get on ebook. Uh, for cheap, cheap, because they're, those are in the public domain. The remainder of the Tarzan series is not. But I'm going to go ahead and show you the Tarzan series so that you have an idea of just how many adventures that this character had, because he had a lot. 
And uh, he was printed for a long time in Ballantine books and for years and years and years. And so they had different cover, cover designs that would show up every once in a while, and I'm gonna show you a few of them. The ones you're, my, you're most likely to have seen in used bookstores uh, is this one, the kind of black bordered Tarzan series. Uh, this is the first volume, Tarzan of the Apes, which I just showed you in a Penguin Classic. When I was younger, this is how we got it. Uh, the Ballantine edition, this is a great Neil Adams cover. Neil Adams, who was famous for his Batman uh, stories in the Batman comics. So that is Tarzan of the Apes. Lord Greystoke Returns in The Return of Tarzan, another Neil Adams cover there. And he shows up once again in the third volume, The Beasts of Tarzan, another Neil Adams cover. You got the feeling reading these that this might have been Edgar Rice Burroughs thinking, ah, this is the end of Tarzan. Now I'm gonna move on to other things. Uh, but much like uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes, uh, couldn't be killed. Tarzan was not a character you could just lay aside because he was far, far too popular. So Edgar Rice Burroughs had to keep going with him. Uh, but he thought he would skip to the next generation with his next book, Tarzan's The Son of Tarzan. Uh, here's The Son of Tarzan, uh, who just happens to get lost in the jungle and grows up much like Tarzan did. Them's the breaks, I guess. Uh, so this is the fourth novel, Son of Tarzan. But Tarzan himself was just too popular to stand aside. He had to return once again in the fifth book, Tarzan and the Jewels of Opar. This is a cool uh, 1960s version uh, of the Tarzan books. And then we go back in time for Tarzan's adventures before he met Jane in Jungle Tales of Tarzan, another great Neil Adams cover. Then we go on with the further adventures of Tarzan. Tarzan the Untamed, and we're getting to the war years here where Tarzan fights in World War I. Tarzan returns once again terribly as Tarzan the Terrible. Uh, there's a great Boris Vallejo cover, and this one, Tarzan fights dinosaurs, because if you're an adventure character, you have to fight dinosaurs eventually. And this is at the point where Tarzan's just finding lost cities left and right in the heart of Africa. I believe this is the last public domain Tarzan that's available. This is Tarzan and the Golden Lion. So up to this book, you can get them all really cheap, like on the Kindle, if you're interested in that. Tarzan and the Golden Lion. And then he came back, Tarzan and the Ant-Man. This was actually a pretty good Tarzan adventure, more Tarzan stumbling uh, once more upon a lost civilization, as he always does. He returns once again in Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. And what's he to do after that? Well, I guess you're going to find a whole colony of lost Romans in Tarzan and the Lost Empire. Another great 60s cover. I like that one. And then we have our first Edgar Rice Burroughs crossover. Edgar Rice Burroughs also did the Inner World novels, the Pellucster series, beginning with At the Earth's Core. And here we have... The crossover, Tarzan at the Earth's Core. This is a pretty good book uh, with a pretty good Neil Adams cover there. Now Tarzan, you got to figure, man, he's had all these adventure adventures. He's pretty invincible at this point. And you're right, because next we get Tarzan the Invincible uh, with a great Neil Adams cover. Now I go back to the, to the 60s cover with Tarzan Triumphant. And we got number 16, Tarzan and the City of Gold. That's a great cover right there. Neil Adams strikes again. And then we get Tarzan and the Lion Man. Tarzan fighting a bunch of apes. And then we get Tarzan and the Leopard Man. What number is this? This is number 18. We're heading towards the end of Tarzan's adventures. We have Tarzan's Quest, a great Boris Vallejo cover there. And we get more Boris Vallejo here in the 20th book, Tarzan and the Forbidden City. That's a great cover by Boris. Then we get Tarzan the Magnificent. Uh, that's a really iconic uh, cover there by Boris. Then we get uh, the last few Tarzan stories, Tarzan and the Foreign Legion. 
Number 23rd book, Tarzan and the Madman. And then the very last book of the Tarzan series. And this one, uh, Boris of Leho did a great job on the cover on this, uh, the last Tarzan book, Tarzan and the Castaways. Good job, Boris. That is an excellent Tarzan cover. And if you've got to figure, finish off the series, he finished off the series really well with that cover. Thank you, Boris. Uh, Tarzan. Uh, so as you can see, Tarzan had a lot of adventures. He went on for years and years. He went on through the First World War. He went on through the Second World War. Uh, Tarzan had found a way to make himself immortal by this point. Uh, he, he actually became immortal, I think, twice. Uh, interesting stories. Because, uh, of course, he would have been an old man by the time the last few Tarzan books showed up otherwise. So Edgar Rice Bros had to find a way uh, to make Tarzan stop aging. And uh, yeah, Tarzan, the Tarzan series, unlike the Edgar Rice Bros. Mars series, really went up and down in quality. Uh, right after the 11th or 12th book, you could see where Edgar Rice Bros. really started recycling the plots pretty heavily. I mean, they were all entertaining, but if you, if you read them all straight in a row, which of course I did, uh, yeah, you can really see them start to repeat themselves. They started to break out of that kind of formula, formula towards the end. But by then, it was the end of Edgar Rice Burroughs. So there were no real Tarzan books after that. Uh, it's interesting how much Tarzan has sort of vanished. You know, most people now probably know Tarzan from that Disney cartoon that came out a number of years ago. But there was a time when Tarzan was hugely popular. Uh, of course, Edgar Rice Burroughs has the same uh, issues here that he had in all of his books and all the books that came out around that era. There were uh, problems with uh, his representation of different races. Um, Native Africans uh, were represented in different ways. Uh, the first book, they were just horrible. Sa the, the natives that you saw were, for the most part, pretty savage. Uh, through most of the first book, uh, but that was one tribe of uh, Africans. Later on, you see some Africans that are just like normal people. And uh, and by the second book, uh, most of the Africans uh, that Tarzan meets were shown in a very positive light. But this went up and down throughout the series. Uh, and through all of Edgar Rice Burroughs' work, that's kind of how it was. Uh, not just uh, with Africans, but with Germans. Uh, you'll notice the Germans are depicted quite badly uh, during the time of the First World War, uh, but later on, Germans are okay again. Uh, so it, it kind of, all, is, all of his depictions of, of different people kind of go up and down. Uh, so, but, you know, he was a man of his time. And I get the feeling that Edgar Rice Burroughs you know, he was a man of his time. He, he did have outdated ideas about race, that's for sure. But I, I get the feeling, uh, just through reading his books, that, that, you know, he knew racism was wrong. And I think he, he did try to depict that. Um, but at the same time, it's hard to know for sure. Uh, so there is that problem uh, that you're going to come up with. Uh, some of the some of the racial stereotypes, for example, could be very offensive. Although compared to some of the stuff that was written in pulp magazines uh, at the same time by other authors, it's really really not that bad in comparison. Uh, yeah, if you went back in time and read some of the stuff that was printed, it it, it could be quite shocking. But I, I've always had a soft spot for Tarzan, at least the literary Tarzan. Now, I was never a big fan of the movies. Uh, but the literary Tarzan, I liked quite a bit, and uh, I enjoyed all of his adventures. Um, my grandfather also uh, enjoyed Tarzan's adventures, and we had that in common. I remember that. Uh, but now, I don't know. Uh, I notice some people on BookTube now and again will read the first Tarzan novel. 
uh, maybe, and I, I've seen uh, a, re a review uh, recently on Working Man Reads where he read the first Tarzan novel and liked it quite a bit. But uh, I don't see too much of Edgar Rice Burroughs uh, talked about nowadays. And uh, certainly not the literary Tarzan. So I was happy to uh, give you this little introduction to Tarzan. I will be uh, going on with my series of pulp heroes again. I probably will do either Doc Savage or The Shadow next. And I probably will talk a little bit more about Edgar Rice Burroughs in the future. So anyway, thank you for letting me take up 16 minutes of your time. I know your time is valuable, and I'm happy that you joined me once again here at Stately Vaughn Manor, and I will see you again real soon. Thanks, guys.